Hey everybody, Jake here. And today we're just gonna talk about going to the Atlanta Pen Show this last weekend, which was April 2nd, I got it right that time. If you watched our last video, we mentioned we were going. Um, so we're just gonna talk a little bit about what we did. We went there, we were about there two hours maybe or so? Yeah. Hour, hour and a half, two hours? Something like that. So we're gonna talk about what we saw, what we bought, and um, our general impressions of the show. So the first thing that I noticed, at least, was the amount of people there. There were a lot more people there than when we went in 2018, I think. It was packed. It was ridiculous. You could barely move through the crowd. It was... We, we noticed there was something kind of off when we pulled up in the parking lot, and there were no parking spots. Um, I think there were maybe one or two open that we saw. We got one of them, luckily. And we went inside, and it was just... It was packed. It was ridiculous. There were um, not as many vendors as when we went the first time though. There were a few empty tables, which was kind of disheartening to see, but the people that were there were doing really good business. They were they were really, really selling a lot of stuff. A lot of people were trying pens. It was really, really nice to see. Naturally, there were a lot of companies that we had seen the previous time we had went that were not present. Um, the last time we were there, Tasia was there. Yeah, a lot of the Japanese brands, I don't know if Tasia's Japanese or not, but um, a lot of the Japanese brands weren't there as well, now that you mentioned that. Stylo Arts, is that? Uh, like, Kun Yeah. I don't know. They make really pretty wooden pens. Um, but they're, the the big ones were there, you know, um, Pilot and Amiki were there. Uh, I I don't think I saw a Platinum representative, or Nakaya at all. Mm-mm. And Sailor didn't have anyone there, I don't think either. A lot of people were selling Sailor pens, but there was no formal representative. Like, Pilot, Pilot and Amiki had. Uh, their tables. I was walking by at one point during past the Minamiki table and this guy was like, can I touch that pen? And the booth guy was like, yeah, you can touch it, but just to let you know it's $15,000. And then he kind of like walked away. <laughs> so that was kind of fun to hear. It's always really fun to see people's reactions when they find out that fountain pens can be that expensive. Yeah, it was really packed. A lot of, a lot of vendors that we had never heard of before, at least for me. Pro yeah. Probably three-fourths of them I've had little to no interaction with. Mm -hmm. Were there any that stood out to you, like in any booths or vendors that seemed really, really cool or anything like that? The Italian booth, Tesori. Um, yes. Well, go ahead and talk about them a little bit because so, <laughs> you were really excited about those. They were beautiful pens. The um, guy that did the pens, he said that he was living in Italy for a while, had come back to America for some family... Um, reasons but all of his pens had venetian glassware in the finial yes it was so beautiful his pens were yeah. gorgeous almost all of them had it um i because i got really i remember this only because i was really disappointed i don't know if you looked at this pen mm -hmm. but he had some pens that were like just like a black resin with a colored stripe in the middle mm -hmm. and i picked one up and it was con it was like cone shaped at the top and it didn't mm -hmm. have venetian glass but the ones that did they were inlaid really 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 beautifully and he was actually raffling off a pen for a, a Ukrainian fundraiser. They had a blue and yellow pen with 26 pieces of a Venetian glass inlaid in it. It was gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Immaculate pen. He did great work. I didn't have the budget to buy some of his stuff because his stuff was pricey. Um, most of the ones that had Venetian glass were, well, I think they started like 280 and went yeah. up. But they were, they were beautiful though. And by that point, we had already bought a pen. <laughs> so yeah. budget wise, not... It was not working yesterday, but there were a lot of beautiful pens and a lot of new just makers and a lot of new ink companies that at least I have kept up with some of the inks. I'm really interested in Krishna inks. They've been really pretty to me. We did not buy any Krishna inks. There was also, do you remember that other ink company that you... Oh, Lord. I remember the color was Flying Squid Blue, which I thought was the coolest thing. There was also the the backpack inks that were all based in different major cities. It was Andorillium inks, Flying Squid Blue. So they had some really, really cool inks. They had pre watched them, which I, I love it when I go to a table and I can just go flip through a book and see all the colors. They had some really, really cool colors there. They also had, if you're into pocket knives at all, they had some Revo pocket knives, which is a newer company. I've been trying their stuff. It's like budgety things. They had a few of those there, which I thought was kind of weird to see at a pen show. Um, and right beside them, of course, was Ryan Krusak's table. I remember I looked over and I saw some pens that I wanted and I had only set aside about $300 for that day and I'd already spent like 140 of it, 150 of it. So I was like, I'm not going to stop at Ryan's table. Love Ryan to death. He was really, really nice last time we were there. Him and his wife both. 
and their kids make some gorgeous pin sleeves. But I knew it was just not in my budget. I was like, I'd need an extra two or three hundred dollars at that point to be able to afford a really nice pen from him. Um, so maybe next year we'll we'll go and get. I really want a pen from him. It's just, mm -hmm. I, yeah, you have to set aside a good chunk of money for his work, and it's worth it. It's very very beautiful in person. If you ever get a chance to check it out, yeah, a lot of vintage pens. <laughs> she knows where this is going. <laughs> so I have been hunting for a pen. No pun intended. I just realized that. Uh, for a very, very long time, um, almost since I got into the pen hobby, and I have found two examples of that pen that were just out of my budget. It is the Pelican M915 Hunting. It was a limited edition release from 1994. Um, I believe they put out 1994 of them. Um, I could be wrong on that, but I, I believe that's correct. They had this really, really cool immaculate you know, wood box, these little silver plaques. The pen itself is gorgeous. It's green enamel with silver trim and a silver woodland scene on the pen. It's 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 beautiful. I got to see that pen in person. Um, there was only one there that I saw. Like I was. Yes, they didn't. Looking, they didn't make many of them at all. I know, but I was like looking at other booths that were selling the antique pens and did not see it at all. That was the only one we saw. If I had a job that paid a little better, I would would have bought it. Um, so that pen. That particular pen is the cheapest I've seen that pen, and it was they wanted eighteen hundred dollars for it, which is ridiculous to me for a pen. Except that pen, if I had had the money, I would have done it. But in order to get that amount of money, I would have had to sell other things that I really do not want to sell. Um, I don't have any pens really that I want to sell at the moment. The ones that I've kept are ones that I really enjoy writing with, that I really like, or sentimental to me. And same thing with knives. I don't have many knives left that I want to get rid of. Um, so $1,800 would just be really hard to come by. If they had said under $1,000, I would have just went ahead and done it and figured out money situation later. But, that being said, if any of you have a lead on a Pelican M915 hunting for around $1,000, let me know. But I'm guessing none of you do. None of you have probably seen one or know what I'm talking about. Um, well, I got to hold one and it was very exciting. I, I, was, I was riding a high for like the next 20 minutes. It was crazy. Okay, rant over. There were also some tables that we were thinking that we would see there. Um, Vaness was there and yep. Drongles mm -hmm. and both of their companies we really like browsing their tables. We didn't buy anything from Vaness this time. Vaness, let me interject here, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt you at all. Vaness's table's in the worst spot possible. <laughs> they have so many pens and so many, so much ink, more ink than pens. Um, and they have like notebooks and accessories and all stuff and it's, it's great. Their table setup's awesome but they are in the back of a room packed on both sides. It is a nightmare to get through to their table. It is. There are people coming on you from both sides, and you're back there. That when you're at their table, there is nowhere for you to go to no. escape the other people. So We, got, we were looking at ink, and we ended up getting trapped. <laughs> um, yeah, Drum Ghouls was there. Drum Ghouls, they, they always have a huge table with a ridiculous selection of pens. They have some of the most ridiculously awesome pens. I've you know I've ever seen there. Um, they had a really good selection this year also of notebooks, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But they're they're always very very nice. I love their table. They have a ton of stuff. It's probably one of my favorite tables is Trongles there. Also, another thing that we saw that we were not necessarily anticipating because we weren't thinking about it, but we were aware that Tomoe River has. Um, it's kind of become a... It's rare. rare. It's rare. Yeah. Right and there was a booth that was selling Tomoe River paper. And, paper. paper. Yeah, and for, it was, for an A5 notebook, it was $28. It was a little pricey. And I was like, I'm not buying that. There's no, there's no way. This was when, also to take into account that a few years back when we had went to Penn Show... Me and Jake both actually ended up buying um, Tomoe River paper notebooks. That was 400 sheets bound in a notebook. And I think they were 30 bucks. Yes, but... To th but they were a lot more paper. It was. I have not wrote in that notebook yet. I'm, I'm terrified. <laughs> I, I cannot stand writing in a new notebook. It scares the shit out of me. I wrote in mine, but I don't know where mine is I have no currently. idea. I don't know. All of mine are... You cannot see this, but I have a cabinet over there for my inks, my pens, stuff. I finally have a space for all my pens and inks and stuff. 
um, or ours really, because you're just as deep in this hobby as I am at this point. And all my notebooks over there, I know where mine are, because I'm a responsible adult. I think mine are probably in, on top of one of my bookcases in there. I have so many notebooks shoved on top of a bookcase, so. That's, okay. <laughs> um, so we, we did make a few purchases. Both times I've gone, I have headed almost immediately to Jonathan Brooks' table because he makes gorgeous materials. Usually though, his pens are gone. At least the ones that I want are gone by the time I get there. They were like that last time. I think that when we went the, the last time, which was in 2018, I saw a few pens that I wanted, like maybe three or four, and I was like, we'll circle around and I'll come back and I'll, I'll, I'll pick one out. Let me think about it for a little bit. I came back and they were all gone. All four of the pens that I wanted were gone. Um, I really wanted one of his like matte finish pens that weren't glossy or anything like that, and they were next to non-existent at his table when we went this time, which again was on a Saturday. They started on a Friday. Normally beside Jonathan, or last time, I say normally because that's, that was my normal, normally beside Jonathan Brooks' table, there was a chocolatier, and he sold these beautiful, delicious little boxes of chocolate. They were very expensive, but they were amazing. The chocolatier was not there this time. No. So I was heartbroken. But, in their place was a company called Mythic Pens. And I found a pen using one of Jonathan's materials that I really, really liked from them. I originally picked up a great ebonite pen. It was enormous. It was ridiculous. It came with a number eight nib section as well as number six. And if you know how big a number eight nib is, you know this pen was stupid. It was ridiculous. But it was really pretty. And I was like, how much is this one? They, say that, they said 350 I was like, I could maybe add 50 but I don't know if I, you know. And then I unscrewed it. And I gripped the section, and it was just way too big. Like, that was, it was a super thick pen. But I really liked some of their materials. So, I found another one. The second pen I picked up, and I, I fell in love with it. It is this pen here, and I will make sure to include some B-roll so that you can see this material is gorgeous. It's kind of a light blue with a deep sea green mixed in, and some purple. It's really, 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 really pretty in person. And apparently this was a prototype pen that they did. And this was, there were two of them there. One was this and there was one that was a little bit smaller. Well, this pen size for my hand was pretty good. You can see it sticks up like a, maybe a half an inch to an inch by, probably closer to an inch behind my hand. The section is a little narrow, but not too narrow. It's narrow enough to where it's comfortable for, for you to use, which yeah. was also important because she uses pens. Um, and I was like, well, how much is this one? Because I really like this one. This one's definitely more my color scheme, and it, it's gorgeous. They said it was $100, so I was like, yeah. Sold. Yeah, immediately. <laughs> let, me, let me go ahead and get that. So I don't know the owner's names, and I apologize for that. I need to look it up. But they do have a podcast called As the Pen Turns, if you want to look into that. Not affiliated. They did not give me a deal. They were just really, really nice people. So they took the pen, asked what size nib I wanted, told them. They tuned the nib right there and we were good to go. They even tested with ink, flushed it out when they were done. It was awesome. And they gave me this little pen pillow thing um, to put the pen in, which was fantastic. So I very much look forward to buying another pen from them at some point, um, hopefully in a different shape, maybe in an ebonite, because they did have some ebonite pens. They were really, really cool. And that was our first purchase. One of the things that was really important for you as well, you had been wanting some Jonathan Brooks materials. And if you've never looked at his stuff, go look. He makes in, some insane stuff. Like primary manipulation is really pretty material of his. And he wasn't going to make any more of this material. So this was my only chance to get this material. And I really like the color of it. It's not quite as glossy as some of the other pens. It's not matte, but it's not super in your face. I really, really like it. And I really like how he mixed it as well. Now onto the second purchase. I'm normally the impulsive, let me buy it now person. I've been working on that a little bit. Um, but I'm normally the one that's like, I want this now. I've heard of this before. I want it. I want it right now in my hand. Well, this year I was a bit more restrained again. I've refined my tastes over the years. I know what I want. It's $1,800 and I can't afford it. So <laughs> we were looking around at John Gould's tables. We mentioned earlier they have an, an amazing selection. And I saw a little notebook that I liked. I didn't end up getting it. But you saw something that you were looking for there. I had been looking this whole time going around to different tables. There were many tables that had a lot of notebook selections. But I specifically wanted a Hobonichi, which is a Japanese brand of planner that's become very popular. And 
I just, I wanted one. I, I need planners for work, but it also had just some features that I was looking for that appealed to me personally. Yeah, and if, if you're in the stationary community at all, you've probably heard of Hobonichi to some degree. They make some really popular planners, as you said. The bullet journaling community really likes them. But their full-size planners get very expensive. Um, $40, $50, $60, I believe, depending on where you go and what kind of you know notebook you get. Um, you got one that was a little bit smaller. They didn't have the full size there. They did not. I think they sell out pretty quickly each calendar year. Could be wrong. That's the way it was back in the day. I'm assuming that's still the case. Um, but what did you get? What, what did you what did you buy at the pen show? I got a weekly Hobonichi planner, and Jake can flip through this later and show yeah. everyone what the features were. And then we also, it's got cute little... It's adorable. <laughs> this version, for, for, ow, for this, just uh, over, okay, so we looked at a plain blue one, and drawing rules is very nice. They're like, you can take it out of the packaging, check the format, you know, see what the inside looks like, all that great stuff. Um, the blue one was $22. Mm -hmm. Because of this cover, this was $7 more. And I was not anticipating this. It was neither, thirty percent more. <laughs> neither was Jake. We um, got out to the car, and he started thinking, and he's like, "I don't, I don't understand what." Where did my money go? <laughs> and I pulled it out of the package, and it did have a different price, which was on my bad, but it it was it's cute. So it is really cute. I just saw something kind of dark too. So the the dog and the cat are cooking here. There's a a dead mouse down there and some bones you know that's kind of messed up um also you know I, I didn't want her to be buying something by herself that can be stressful that can be embarrassing you know oh why isn't jake buying something with me or is this table not good enough for him and i didn't want anyone to think that so i picked up a colorverse ink if you will give it to me it is a baby bottle of somnium a little moon on it it's like a gray green it's really cute. So when Colorverse made inks, when I went the first time, it's been a few years again, you would buy them in a pack of two. You would get a baby ink, a five milliliter in one color, and then you'd get a 50 milliliter, I believe, in another color. Those were very expensive. It was $38, I think, for a pack of two of them. That's a lot of money for ink. Uh, most inks are 10 to 20, you know, for a 50 milliliter bottle. So... I saw these. They had them in a three pack, but um, Larry Drongul, the owner, was like, "You can just pick one of the colors." And they're they were still expensive. They're seven fifty a piece, and I cannot stress to you enough: this is minuscule. It is so small. I actually cannot get my pen nib in here, the Mythic pen that I bought. I tried today, and the shoulders were too large on it. They would not go into the the neck of it, so it's next to useless. But it came with a really really cool little thing. It came with this. It is a baby pipette. So what you do is you dip this down in the ink, of course, you squeeze it, suck your ink up in it. That's cool. That's basic. Whatever. It's been done before. But this is just wide enough, just wide enough to fit down in your converter. So you shove it down in the converter and you squeeze the ink in. Boom. You're done. Now you just have overpriced ink, but at least it's usable. It's not unusable overpriced ink, which I was worried about. Um, but yeah, they're really, really cute little bottles. I love Colorverse's bottles. They're, they're really attractive to me. They're probably some of my favorite shaped, um, in terms of appearance for filling. They're a nightmare because they're perfectly round almost. Yeah. But yeah, there were a few other things that we wanted to buy. And by we, I mean me. I, I think you, if, if we'd had, you know, just frivolous money, I think you probably would have bought one of the Venetian glass pens. If you, or, or maybe a Namiki. Again, Maybe. If, if we had frivolous money. Um, One of the things we did look at buying, but we decided not to, we have not tried any of the Ferris wheel press, press ink. ink. I have personally heard that they're very dry. Um, if you have experience, we would love to see what your experience is with those inks. No, we don't care. <laughs> yeah, if you actually have tried some in person, please let me know. So yeah, those were our purchases from the pen show. And I, I definitely want to go back next year, now that we've kind of settled down the world. So crazy, COVID is not over. It's not over. Go get vaccinated. But, but, um, it's calmed down. So 
I would love to go again next year, hopefully with a slightly larger budget and maybe a bit more focus on what I'm looking for apart from the Pelican M915 hunting. Um, is there anything that you saw that you were like, you know, uh, well, I, I think, you know, I've probably answered this for you. I don't need you to talk. Um, the, the Krishna inks, I'm guessing. Yeah. So next year we probably need to go Friday if possible. Mm-hmm. Um, because I know you want to try some of the colors, and they had some really, really, really pretty colors, but they didn't have any of them in stock, right? Yes. That was a, a big thing. A little bit heartbreaking. Um, there will, I think next year, if, if I'm, I'm trying to stick with writing with fountain pens, I don't do it for work anymore. I don't have a use for them for work anymore. So like a lot of people, I'm struggling to find when to use these pens. I need to sit down and focus on that a bit more, which I'm hoping to do soon. But if I'm able to get through another bottle or two of ink this year, I would love to pick up some more inks next year because they had a lot of brands that I've not heard of. A lot of them were Japanese brands. They had a few based off of the Greek gods that were kind of interesting. They also had, like you said, the backpack inks and the, you know, the, the blue flying squid ink. I really like the color in particular. And Krishna, of course. There were, there were probably, which is weird for me, there were probably a lot more inks this year that drew my attention than pens. Um, there are a few pens. I, I want to look at a narwhal pen. I've heard a lot of hype about them. There's a whole debacle with them in Twisby, which I can get into one day if you want me to. Um, but I, I want to try something about them at some point just to see what all the hype's about. We actually ended up seeing right across from Dromgul's table, which I'm sorry, I don't remember what the vendor was, but there was a massive tower of ink. It was a fantastic display. It was, I'm like 5'9", five, 5'10"-ish. Five, it was probably six and a half feet tall. It was huge. It was enormous. The amount of ink they had there was insane. It was ridiculous. Um, it was it was like a, a cart style, so just shelves, and it was double sided with all kinds of inks. There were so so many, and I was I, again. Um, there, this place was really packed. It was very hard to get around that, and I was kind of paranoid, honestly, about bumping into something, mm -hmm. um, which you do not want to do at a pen show. So that was that was a little bit frustrating. They were also near Franklin Christoph's table, and while Franklin Christoph was slower this year than they were the last time we were there there was still constantly probably five or six people milling around the table. Mm -hmm. And Franklin Christoph has a big table, but it's right at the back corner of a room and it's kind of hard to get around. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the same situation as where Venice is. That there's yeah. people flowing both ways and that's a dead end. I think the... the I think with the Pencho being as popular as it was this year, I would really like to see them try a larger venue. I like the place they're at now, which is the Sinesta um, something or other. It, Sinesta Galleria Northwest. Yeah, it's it's in Atlanta, um, which which is fine. But I really think it's getting a little too big for the venue that it's at. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if there's extra rooms they can do. or And it's not an issue where there's too many vendors. There's just too many people. I think the vendors need to be spread out more. There are even wise, vendors just... in the hall going from rooms to room to room. There are three main rooms and then the hallway that connects them all. There are a few less vendors than last time we were there. But, so, so when, you, when you come in the entrance, to the left is the pen show. Well, if you go straight, there used to be tables there as well. There were not any this year. There were a few open spots we saw in a, in a variety of the rooms. The smaller rooms were booked up, but the big room had probably three or four table slots that were open. Mm -hmm. And like I said, there were a lot of new people I've never heard of. There were a lot of people missing that I thought were going to go, but that's just the way things are. I'm really, really hoping that the pen show can kind of bounce back and hopefully again, get to a bigger, a larger venue that will allow people to shop a bit more comfortably. It was very tight, it was very packed. And I wouldn't recommend going on a Saturday if that's your only day. If you can go on a Friday, go on a Friday. You do not go on a Sunday because everything will be gone. Anything you want, it's gone. Yes, that thing you're thinking about right now, it would be gone too. You <laughs> wouldn't have it at all. So overall, I, I had a lot of fun. Um, we did some other stuff while we were down in Atlanta because we thought we'd stay at the pen show longer, but it, to be honest, it was, it was exhausting. There were a lot of people there. It was really, really hectic, and I spent money sooner than I thought I would. Um... We actually didn't spend that much total. We spent 
$136, I think. Mm -hmm. $137. Not bad, considering the last time we went, it was well over a thousand, I think. You bought I'll your Pelican them. Ocean Swirl. I bought a Pelican and made a five Ocean Wait. Swirl. Was it that one? Or yes. No, you bought the orange one. You bought the orange one for our anniversary for me. Oh. Yeah. We bought two pins down there. Actually, we got three pins because you got a Maquia Platinum. Yes. Yes, you did. Also, With the cranes. Yes, the cranes. Um, we also got a, a ton of, of ink and notebooks over there we came back with like a bag full of bag full of stuff um so we were a lot more tame this year a lot more reserved uh, again i we have a ton of pens already we have a ton of ink there's not a whole lot really that can excite me outside of the like the stuff that i just can't afford yep. or um stuff that's just out of my reach like like the um the venetian glass pens those are really cool, but it's really hard for me to justify spending $350 on a pen when I'm struggling to use the pens that I have now. Mm -hmm. So next year, I'm hoping I'm in a better space or better place in my pen journey and I can, that sounded so cheesy, didn't I? Well, I hope I'm in a better place in my pen journey, but <laughs> I hope I'm using them more. I'm, I'm getting to, to utilize them to, whether it be to journal or, or whatever. I do hope that if we choose to go back next year, there will be a little bit more pen community engagement when we had went in 2018. Um, there was a live podcast that There was a podcast that happened. The pen there were many um, workshops there. Mm -hmm. um, Brian Goulet was also there. He was. And I was. <laughs> So he, I was so nervous. I didn't go up and talk to him. There were a lot of people talking to him. He's like 14 feet tall, and he just seems so nice. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to talk to you, you, you giant kind man. But yeah, Brian Goulet was there. He was really, really nice, and it was really cool to see, like you said, people out interacting with the community because that is the community for pens. It's massive online, and I completely get that. But there's so few physical locations where people can meet up. We do have one somewhat locally, um, True Fay. They do pen events every now and then. Um, the only one I've been to, unfortunately, was their grand opening because then COVID hit and stuff got weird and house money and it just, it was not a good pen time for me. Um, but having access to those things, like, you know, like having a pen store, or like going to Pelican Hub even, that was really, really fun. That was awesome. Going to these pen shows, um, I would love to see more in engagement from leaders in the community I guess you would call them like figureheads for the community because whether they like it or not Brian Goulet is a figurehead for the community you know um Brad Dowdy the pen addict he is a figurehead for the community to some degree even though he talks about other non-fountain pens which are gross he's he's there and he's prominent um even some of the stores that were there you know Van S Lisa Van S is also pretty prevalent in the community She's out there. A lot of, you know, calligraphy artists or just people who draw using fountain pens, you know, they could show up and do a QA and a panel, anything like that. I think we keep the community a lot more engaged. And I don't know if that needs to be done on the side of the creators or done on the side of the hosts for the, the pen show, the organizers. But stuff like that, I think, would draw in an even larger crowd, which would be a little terrifying in mm -hmm. that current venue. So hopefully they update that. Um, do you have any closing thoughts on the show or anything like that? Nope. No. It was it was good. It was fun. Yeah. And the tickets are still really cheap. It's ten dollars yeah. center. It's pretty solid considering what you get to go into and look around at. Mm-hmm. No free t shirts this year though. Yeah. It's kinda of sad. But yeah, that's it. If you have any questions about the pen show or anything like that, just let us know and we'll be more than happy to answer them. Hope you all had a wonderful time, whether you went to the pen show or not. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.